Hooked on that. That was filled up yesterday. Done the surf feeder. Got to fill that up again. This is the importance of having a nice, sheltered, warm spring holding yard. This is down, I'm not sure if you know the landscape of my farm, but Miami is right on the edge of the escarpment of ancient Lake Bomb, flat as a pancake. And the escarpment is the shore of the lake our farm's up up on top. The difference is, what is the difference? Uh, like 500, 600 feet elevation difference from down here to the farm. And I have a few colonies that's outside the honey house right now, which are not flying because it's that much colder up there. Down here, bit of a heat sink. These bees are actively flying, actively foraging. And you see a significant difference in the early spring development by making sure I have my colonies in a warm, secluded area. It's one more of those things. What did I see there? Thought I seen some robbing. Maybe a little bit of defending going on here. That's another problem with having so many colonies in one yard is the big ones pick on the small ones and this isn't a small one because they're able to defend themselves but I'm seeing quite easy deliberate flight organized no frenzy no pulling yet I think we're close. So we're through one, two, three truckloads of bees. We have another seven to do. By the end of the weekend, we should be halfway through feeding. We're feeding protein patties. We're medicating with oxytetracycline. And we're treating for mites. We're tipping back every colony and we're assessing them, scraping up the bottom board, scraping up the top. We're doing everything all together this year. So being in a mad rush to get things done before snow comes, typically we're going as fast as we can with to choose between what jobs we do. And it typically is the protein patty first off. But this year I'm going through and we're getting everything done all at once. Here's robbing here. This one's a dead colony. So we're gonna pick up all the dead as soon as we get around to them just to prevent that robbing nature by midweek we should have everything fed and medicated that is a box of bees textbook. Who are they? 2001, one of Carrie's crafted gleams, showing brilliance from years past. This is last year's, this is a Hawaiian, this is a Kona Queen. Giddy up. So that's my uh, full-size colonies and I go down to my nukes, same thing very high viral loads. My nosema counts are low. My mite counts are low. Well, my counts don't show up here, but my, my shakes that I'm doing right now are very low. My viral infection is off the charts, right across the board. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, 
you know, we're testing these viruses. These are just the ones we're testing. And I don't know what to make of it. My train of thought is the accumulation of all these high levels of virus, I think this is creating just a catastrophic problem for these bees. If poopy French shitty colonies is a direct symptom of high viral load, I've never heard that. I don't know, but it is the top of my list. What's causing my shitty colonies this spring? Another idea that's been tossed around by a lot of beekeepers continuously is focusing on my feeding program. And it's something I can't rule out. It's something that I'm doing and I have to analyze I have to recognize it as being a possible suspect. One thing that I do within my operation is when I'm feeding, like I fed very heavy last fall with supplement. And that's what built these terrific nests that helped, you know, extend that brooding period <clears throat> further into fall. Because we ran into drought situations last year and that queen was shutting down. So I provided her the nutrients she needed to build a build that winter nest in which I'm seeing right now within my bees. I'm, I'm seeing the results of the feed program. But I fed late in summer to the point where I established that winter nest and then I stopped. So there's very little supplemental feeding of uh, protein or any of my further additives to those colonies past September 1st. And maybe clean it up a little bit going into September, but basically for September on, all they had was the incoming pollen that was lingering in the countryside and sugar. So they had September and October a flight to be able to rid of all that wasteful product that I may have fed to them. So I'm kind of ruling it out because of that. But that, that doesn't necessarily mean that I can rule it out completely. I need a control on it. And I didn't run any controls within my own operation but I do have a control for this to prove my point. Uh, within their tech transfer program, they had 150 colonies or whatever running in a trial. And these colonies were managed on my pasture and managed on the pasture and then brought into my winter shed uh, to winter. So those colonies were managed um, a lot differently than mine. Uh, very specific. The management actually did not mirror my management whatsoever. So I'm using those colonies as my control. They're within the same area, uh, within the operation to a certain extent, there is setbacks and whatever, managed exclusively differently than mine, wintered in my shed. They come out and those colonies too, they started pooping on the front as March approached and they're out. And I just got some feedback from Matthew that they are very poopy, very much the same symptom as what I'm seeing within mine now. So if those colonies are experiencing the same symptoms as mine, managed completely different than mine, then that's telling me that my management within my operation is not resulting in that poopy symptom. It rules it out. So we have to look at that control is very important to be able to help me rule that out. So I have to look at other similarities within the countryside or within the bees themselves. The other is canola. There's a lot of canola growing in this countryside. And maybe it's a stress of the canola honey or it's the consumption of the canola pollen later on in, in winter. And what my train of thought is kind of leading to is as the colonies are going through winter, one month, two months, three months, four months, we go into March, the colonies are clean. They're very healthy. They look great. The shed smells all right. Not seeing any poopy fronts. We'll get into March. These colonies are now, you know, they've consumed a lot of feed and they are now opening up frames and exposing the pollen and they start ingesting pollen and then they use some of that pollen to start making that early brood nest. So if they're consuming the pollen later on in the winter and maybe there's a problem with that pollen within the frames causing gut issues, which is expressing with the shitty fronts, stress 
And then when you get them out and fly, there's shit and poop everywhere. That could be a problem. I don't know. And I don't know how to follow through with that. Other than an analyzing the pollen within the dead oats I have right now or focusing on the, uh, the colonies that have a shitty front and then focusing on colonies that don't <clears throat> and seeing what the difference is between those two pollens. And I'm thinking maybe that might be a good little project I can do. A little bit of citizen science. But as I say that right now, the data is telling me that I have a huge accumulation of viral infection within my nests. And this information is telling me that this is suspect number one, is my virus infection problem. I don't know how to handle that.